All right, let's talk about NPR rendering or non-photorealistic rendering. Of course, if you're gonna want to render, you need something on your screen here. So if you click the simple brush, you can grab any one of these primitives, say a Sphere 3D, you can drag it on your canvas, go into edit mode. Uh, you don't have to make it a Polymesh 3D, but I'm always in the habit of hitting make Polymesh 3D. And then uh, if you wanna see the floor plane that the cast shadow is gonna be on, you can turn on the floor plane here, and now you can go ahead and hit BPR render. If you want something a little cooler to look at, go ahead and hit the comma key. And by default, it's probably going to pick the project tab, but if not, uh, you can go ahead and select that, or you can select a tool. You can double click a tool and drag it on your canvas, but we'll stick here with project. There is an NPR folder, and we'll be getting to that later, uh, but down here in the demo projects, if you double click that, there's a couple of different ones you can choose from. Uh, if we do this little mech right here, uh, project been changed, you want to save your changes, go ahead and hit no. That'll clear out your scene and then you've got this guy on your canvas. Now, if we're doing rendering, generally speaking, you probably want to do a beauty render, which means going out of orthographic mode, which means turning this perspective button on. So you can see by toggling this on and off, and you hover over this, you can see that is P, so you can just tap the P key and turn perspective on and off. And now when we hit the BPR key, we're doing a best preview render, which is what BPR stands for, and that's giving us a nice render. Now, when we loaded this project, it went ahead and did a uh, shiny matte cap, so you can go here, you can see we have matte caps up here where it says matte cap materials down here has standard materials. So if you go in here, I like to use the startup material that I have, which is the matte cap gray. That's my default material. Now, one thing you might notice is between the matte caps and the standard is the matte cap materials aren't affected by ZBrush lights. It's the lighting is baked into this little sphere here. If you want more information on that, if you go to my YouTube channel here and go to my playlist section, you can go to the ZBrush guide stylized rendering and then I'll explain matte caps way more in depth. But it's just kind of a quick overview. If we go ahead and close out this brush menu, you can see over here I have this uh, brush menu docked on the left-hand side. If you double-click this divider, you can close it. If you double-click it, again, you can open it. And then uh, this brush menu, you can just click this little white or this white circle here, and I'll get rid of that brush menu. And we want to talk about the light menus. Let's go ahead and open up the light menu, grab this little white dot, and just drag it over here. Now with this light menu open, you're going to see there's a yellow dot here. We have a light turned on, and we can move this dot around, but it's not updating on my model. However, if I move the light over to this side, and then click BPR, you're going to see that shadow is going to fall to the other side. So it will dictate, even with a matte cap, which direction your shadow is going to fall. It's just not going to affect how the light interacts with the actual model, because again, that lighting information is baked into the matte cap. Also, if you move your model at all, it's going to go ahead and go out of BPR mode. And if you turn the floor off and then do BPR render, it's not going to cast a shadow. So you need that floor turned on in order to cast a shadow. If you go in here to the draw menu and turn your grid size way down and then click BPR again. Now back in the old days, if you went up to, let's say the draw size and you changed your grid size down and or your grid size came in very small, FYI, if you go into the draw menu and you change your grid size, that will make the grid size bigger, big, bigger or smaller. However, uh, it used to affect the cast shadow, but now even with a grid size that's very small, your cast shadow will be captured no matter what. So we'll go ahead and take this grid size and we'll change that back up here. Now if we go from a matte cap to any one of these standard materials, let's go ahead and choose Skin Shader 4. You're going to see as we move this light around, that light on my model is going to update in real time. You can also turn on more lights. You can click on the light to select it and then tap it again to turn it on. So you can have multiple lights in here. You can turn these on and off and you can change the colors. And if you want to know more about the basics of ZBrush, I have an intro to ZBrush series as well as the ZBrush for ideation, which kind of goes over the very simple basics of ZBrush. But we're going to keep this simple, and we're going to take good and turn off all these lights except for this one right here. So now you can see this light is going to affect our model in real time using these real-time shaders, which are the standard materials down here. You also might notice, uh, if I open up the subtool menu here, that as I click a different subtool in here, or I can Alt-Tap, them on my screen, it's gonna be a little bit lighter. However, when I hit BPR render, they're all gonna render correctly. That's just a way for you to visualize which subtool you have selected. Now, usually when I'm doing rendering, I like to get very fast renders done, just so I can iterate a little bit faster, get the look I'm going for, and then I can increase the quality as needed. One way to kind of make your renders a little bit faster is up here where it says s -Pix. You can hover over that, you're gonna see that is the sub-pixel anti-aliasing render quality. If you turn that down to zero and then hit BPR, It'll go ahead and render really fast. Now, if you don't change anything, like if you turn perspective off and on and you hit BPR, it'll be instantaneous because it's just storing that render data. In fact, if you go into the render, BPR render pass, it's just storing this information on here. So if you don't change anything that really affects the way that ZBrush is going to render, it'll just re-render this object. So one example of that is turning perspective on and off again, it'll just re-render. However, if you move the object, that'll go ahead and do a new full render pass, but you're gonna see it's much faster now that we did the S-Pix of zero.